I'm delighted to welcome Anna Jackson, who is the judge for the Hippocrates Young Poets Prize for 2021. Anna is herself a poet and an associate professor of English literature at the Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. Um, well, I want to say how very much I enjoyed reading all of the poems that were sent in for this award from all over the world, so many poems, um, and every, every single entry had something to commend it for. Um, these were poems that took important matters into consideration with interesting approaches to form, lyrical beauty, original imagery. Um, I, could, I could read in the poetry how seriously um, the entrants were uh, responding to this opportunity, um, the, you know, the depth of thought and interest that went into every entry. Um, even so, um, there were some poems that really did stand out. Um, these were clearly written by um, writers of tremendous talent, um, really interested in poetry, obviously been reading and thinking about poetry for some time. Um, and there were five poems in particular um, that had something about them I kept wanting to return to. And this was um, my, the, the main thing that I, um, that I looked for really, which are the poems that I want to not only read, but reread, um, that I think about even in between reading them, that I find myself remembering images from, um, or thinking about the form, um, even, even when I put the poems down. Um, so Olivia Yang's Still Life Quarantine, for instance, um, is a poem that's dazzlingly inventive in its form. Um, the gorgeous, grotesque excess of the detritus accumulating in a room over quarantine is reflected in the intricate palimpsestic arrangement of this poem. It's a poem in which sentences written in italics are interleaved with descriptive couplets um, and images that are introduced at the opening of the poem are returned to at its close. The moth still masticating, the pear still oozing its intestinal pus. It's, it's kind of awful, you know, it's, it's, it's grotesque in the imagery, um, but so sensuous and so intense, such a wonderfully visceral account of the effects of lockdown. Um, Elaine Kim's poem, Origami, in contrast is, um, is simple um, and mysterious in its imagery. Um, this is a poem full of strange similes and images of creasing as memory and mourning grief is a closed window in an unending hallway. It's a poem that invites the reader both to consider and to look and offers both images and ideas, repetition and renewal. In between bodies there are songs, the poem concludes, as if gesturing towards its own lyricism, but it goes a step further finding something like remedy not in the songs, but in the in-between. So a wonderfully haunting poem um, with images that, that I would find myself thinking of as if they're sort of unfolding in my mind. Um, Rachel Brooks, November is when I become um, another um, virtuoso poem, um, just so cleverly and artfully constructed um, the title, November is when I become, um, it opens the sentence that's concluded within the poem itself with the word double jointed. Um, and in between that title and the first word of the poem's first couplet is a dedication for Alice Danlos syndrome, um, which makes the title itself appear as another couplet. Um, so that everything in this poem um, is made up of, of couplets, of doublings. Um, the poem speaker has a cousin as fragile and elastic as herself. Um, there's a doubling going on with the extended metaphor, the cousins as calves, as bovine. Um, 
Um, so, so kind of wonderfully artfully constructed around um, a whole series of sets of doublings um, to explore um, what it is to live with this, um, this condition. Um, but it's a poem as much about love as it is about illness. Um, and, and that's what makes it um, not only artfully constructed and interestingly informed, um, but moving to read as well. Um, the poem, um, My Ho Akawale, Separating Sickness by Rhys Pierce. Um, again, another, another poem that's, that's very informed um, by medical details, um, but asking the question, what is medical? What is literary? Um, it's a poem that brilliantly evokes both of these frameworks, the medical and the literary. Um, the poem is given the title of a sickness, um, but opens with lines echoing the opening of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Um, in fair Kalo Papa, where we lay our scene, two houses, unalike in dignity, saw the world too differently. Um, and it's um, brilliantly sustains all the way through um, these two frameworks, the interest in history, um, the interest in fact, in, in medical details, um, but, um, but also too, um, throughout the poem, um, the poem is haunted uh, by the past we cannot understand, um, by the ongoing need of ghosts to be heard um, in these wonderfully literary terms. Um, but finally, um, there, there was the one poem <laughs> that, um, that I did keep returning to above, above all as I, as I kind of whittled down um, the, the pile of entries to um, the, the poems that I return to most and most often. Um, there was one that, that really captured me right from the very start, and that is Ivana Dientika's Euphemisms for Cancer. Um, this was the poem that I would find myself remembering almost as if I was remembering a dream that I had had in that way that, that you'll sometimes remember an image or a scene and not be quite sure where you're remembering it from. Um, it's um, a deceptively simple poem um, that simply presents a small scene in an ongoing story. Um, it's, it's written by a poet who's, who's clearly a talented storyteller. Um, but the gift of, of narrative compression, um, to be able to write a, a narrative that works as powerfully as this in, in so short a form, um, it's, it's really unusual to find a poem so, so you know, um, so so brilliantly narratively constructed, um, you know, it, 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 it's a, a poem that, that could be a short story, um, just as a sonnet could be an essay. Um, but, but that kind of brevity, while still giving that sense of the whole of a life, um, is, is really very hard to do, um, and, and charges the whole poem with the resonance that, that for me is what poetry is all about. <laughs> for me, poetry is all about resonance, something beyond the poem that you're reading, something that haunts you, that captures you. Um, the opening sentence of the poem establishes that that narrative control that distinguishes the poem as a whole, um, beginning with the fact of the grandmother's terminal illness before introducing the family picnic during which the family will try not to think of what the poem and what the picnic can't help but be about. Um, and I just found that that way of circling around um, what we're told so efficiently right at the, the beginning, um, for me that just had a tremendously powerful effect. 
Um, and so in, in the end, um, I chose for the winning poem, the poem that I just kept thinking about and remembering and that I feel will, will um, haunt me for a long time in, in the best kind of most beautiful possible way. Anna Jackson, thank you very much indeed. Worth just picking up on a couple of obvious questions. These awards are aimed at poets aged 14 to 18. And an obvious question is why should somebody at that stage uh, take an interest in poetry? I'm, I'm not sure um, how it is all around the world, but in New Zealand at the moment, um, poetry is very much um, the form of writing that young writers in particular seem to be most excited by. We have poetry readings where um, you can't get in the doors, you know, that people are spilling out onto the streets. Um, there, there's a group of young poets who've begun introducing backup dancers to their performances of their poetry. And, you know, the effect is absolutely electric. Um, poems can be so easily shared online. You know, it's, um, we, we, there are so many online journals now, and, you know, a, a Twitter link, a Facebook link will, will take you to the poems, you read them at once, you share them with your friends. Um, it's, it's such an accessible form in that way. Um, and at the same time allows for so much, as, as the entries to the Hippocrates Prize shows, um, um, can be so demanding, can allow for so much um, ingenuity, um, so much originality, um, and you can bring anything into a poem, um, as, as again, these awards show, you know, um, it can be about um, the, the most complex ideas, it can be about a book that you're reading that captivates you, it can be um, a scene from your own life, um, it can have literary references, or it can, um, you know, draw on medical jargon, or um, there's, there's so much scope for poetry to work in so many different ways. Well, clearly, <laughs> clearly from the, you know, from reading these poems, it's, it's clearly a um, theme that, um, that really resonates and can be tremendously productive. These poems were all so different from each other, um, but I suppose illness and the body, it's, I mean, we all live in bodies. It's always going to be intimate. It's going to be grounded um, in the way that the very best writing is, I think. Um, it makes it urgent, it makes it personal, it makes it physical. Um, and at the same time, um, illness has, has so many meanings on so many, levels um illness is, is physical but also cultural it's also social and um one person's illness will affect not only their lives but the lives of everyone around them 